Hello everybody, good morning, good evening, depending on where you are, I'll be right with you. Thanks for coming. Good morning, bruh moment. Thanks for coming on short notice, people. Usually I'm posting my streams with somewhat of a lead time on them. Give people Time to, I don't know, set a notification, but today I'm like, what the heck, let's just try a spontaneous casual morning stream, just a short one, and just see who shows up. Whoops. Gonna be working on the pieces I had yesterday. Hello, Robert. Uh, let's see. Water's clean, so I'll re-moisten the palette. I don't have a time goal on this stream like I usually do with the other ones. It's just like I'm basically gonna stream until my until I'm like okay I need to eat breakfast. Just a casual Friday morning business you know. Yesterday's stream, I was working on the freehand. I think today's stream is mostly... Well, I guess I did put freehand in the title, so I should probably do some of that. I think before I do that... I'm gonna do just a little bit of, uh... Black, or, uh, gray edge highlighting dealing with my mistake of putting too much water on the palette again. Alright. Whoops. Hello, Carlisle. Glad to know you're painting along. And yeah, Robert, I gotta have a coffee in the morning. I need it to function like many 21st century people whom star addicted to the caffeine. Okay, I got a bit of a bubble underneath the palette here. Let's see if I can just relay the paper here. Mm. 
Oh dear, looks like some paint is leaking through. Hopefully that doesn't become an issue. And hopefully that wasn't just mold on the palette. I've taken the proper mold precautions. So, uh, as you might know, the first round of black edge highlighting was done. It was a mix of this uh, P3 Iron Hole Gray and black. So the next round is just going to be iron, uh, pure Iron Hole Gray. Customer GM, like a commission, and you've got G Witch watching over. I'm assuming you mean you're watching, or you got G Witch playing in the background while you're watching. under the palette there. Well, it looks more like paint is spilling through than mold, so... Just have to hope that's what it is for now. At least for this stream, I'm gonna get painting now. <clears throat> Oh, I see the Ariel is on the desk watching over. Very good. Don't need to thin this gray too much. Just a little bit. Yeah, a little bit of extra control. like we did with the turquoise in the last stream or just going over all the lines we did before but with a skinnier line Ariel that's watching over the GM on the desk, the high grade Ariel like mine, or is it the full mechanics one? Made a bit of a mistake there, but I think I still have some black on the palette that can be reactivated. Casually mix in, I can fix it on the fly. I think I need to move the camera over just a little bit. The space command GM, I don't know if I know that one. Yeah, I've probably seen it before. instead 
which for the painting I'm doing on this project, probably for the best. Full mechanics looks pretty dope. I think if I if I had to choose between like the full mechanics and the Calabarn though, I would pick the Calabarn. My voice is a little hoarse today, so I'm not sure if I'll be doing as much talking, but, you know, I still try to bring up casual conversation points when I think of them. And, of course, everyone's welcome to ask me questions or whatever in the chat. Like usual. Hello Barbatos. The thinner mixture. I mean I'm just thinning with water and I I just mix in like a little bit of like when I rinse off the brush and then bring it back to the palette to refill. I usually just have a bit of water on the brush, so I just thin like a little bit when as I grab some paint. And the amount of thinness depends on what I'm painting for these edge highlights I need a decent amount of control but I don't need them to be too thick so I just thin a little bit but for something like glazing or base coating I might thin a bit more and you just kind of have to <laughs> vibe it out it's kind of hard to describe proper thinning ratio at least for hand painting because I don't have like an exact ratio, I just go by the feel. Cause I've like... It's just come with practice, I guess. Also, I'm not sure, Barbara Toast, if you meant thinning with water with acrylic paints or using like a lacquer or an enamel thinner. When it comes to thinning for airbrushing, I also kind of go by a vibe, but all, all the airbrushing I've done recently has been with acrylics. If I'm thinning with the airbrush, well, I mean, most of the airbrush work I've done recently has been like just Vallejo Black Surface Primer, which I just put straight in the cup with a couple drops of flow improver and then usually I'm just doing some either like a metallic or like a quick base coat color and that I just like eyeball the mixture and try and get it to roughly the consistency of milk I don't use water though I'll use like actual airbrush thinner for acrylic paints and you know, continue to use a couple drops of flow improver. And uh, I don't recommend eyeballing the mixture. I just do it that way because I'm lazy. And But sometimes that uh, bites me in the behind because it doesn't spray out in the way I like because I'm too lazy to, like, do the testing and get the ratios right. Because you know me, I'm a more of a hand painter boy. Hello, GS Tyler. Good morning. Galaxy style skin on some Gunpla. I mean, if I was ever to do something like that, I would try and use some kind of like 
airbrush sputtering or like paintbrush splattering technique to just like flick on a bunch of like specks to look like stars. Good morning, M. Tsu. Hopefully I said your name right there. Not the part I'm like brushing on right now, but like section to the left of this has more of like a broad edge. So when it comes to the second edge, I'll probably gonna split it up into two edges. See what I mean in a second. We got one line there and then we'll do another line here. Yeah, I think that's gonna work. <coughs> Split up into the same, in the same way, more or less. And the darker gray edge light on this one wasn't quite done in the same way. I have to go add a bit in the middle there. Got fun plans for the weekend. Oh, Barbatos. Did you see the Barbie movie yet? I ended up seeing it twice because. Two different people wanted to, or invited me to see it. Unfortunately, I haven't seen Oppenheimer yet. Probably be wearing a glove for this part, but uh, you know, it's just a casual Friday morning stream. Uh, just gonna give myself that little, uh, that little 
break from the sweaty hand this stream. All right, that's the black edge highlighting done on this piece for now. There'll be uh, another pass of just like the the final brightest edge highlights, but that'll be later on after. I think I got to finish the freehand blocking and do that initial great edge highlight on everything, and then take some work in progress shots. And then we'll do the final edge highlights later on towards the end. Okay, I am going to put the glove on, actually. <laughs> Fair enough, Barbatos. Barbatos has so many good outfits to try on, just like Barbie. Am I right? Now this section here, I don't. I'm not gonna like go into the recessed edge highlight that because it's not really <clears throat> gonna be visible. I think I'm only doing this band across here. Maybe do like just a little bit of that sides You can kind of see this like, this part here, the paint was torn up a bit. I don't know if that was from it accidentally touching the skewer or probably more likely it was rubbing against other parts of the waste when I put it back together for some photos. I'm going to have to be a bit more careful in that spot. front area of the thigh is uh, going to be a bit more visible so I'm giving it I'm going a bit harder on the edge highlights and splitting this into two lines Okay, good luck, Amsu. I'm, I'm flattered that you want to try my painting style. <clears throat> are you are Barbatos? You're referring to Margot Robbie putting on the classic Gundam colors. I'm sure she's got a good outfit in those colors. there. 
thankfully we got the handy wet palette to just grab a bit of darker paint and fix it. <clears throat> well, since, uh, you know, I gathered this intel last stream, so I should ask again, since this is usually I'm not doing morning streams. But uh, with this being the second morning stream, it seems like the turnout's pretty good. How many of you watching were like, wow, he's streaming at a time I can actually watch. Is anyone watching feeling like, I much prefer it when he streams in the morning. I think when I do morning streams, like on average, they'll all probably be like a bit shorter than what I do in the evenings, you know, depending on the day. But uh, not by much. Hello, high side. Wow. I guess I could probably just do a little bit of a top edge highlight there. Even though this area, it might be covered up by the waist flap. Great coincidence for you, usually working. Interesting. Yeah, I figured doing morning streams, the audience would be more like people that are just, you know, answering emails or whatever and have me going on a second monitor or something. Also, hello, Box Fox Scoot. Thanks for coming. here.
in case anyone noticed, I included a Twin Peaks reference in my stream title today, because uh, Blue Parappa just started watching Twin Peaks. Of course, I'm re-watching some of it with her, because it's a great show. Before I watched Twin Peaks, I didn't drink as much coffee as I do now, but Agent Dale Cooper's enjoyment of a, a black coffee, black as midnight on a moonless night. Seeing his passionate enjoyment for that coffee uh, made me want to drink more black coffee. Edge highlighting is done. There's nothing like build gumpla when your day's falling apart. <laughs> day's falling apart, but the gumpla's coming together. Uh, yeah, Barbatos, I usually with my hand painted kits, I do two coats of thinned down matte varnish. Through the airbrush, I think the stuff I have in my supply right now is Army Painter. I might like brush on some gloss varnish onto the permit sections, like this section on the thigh afterwards. Just to make it more sparkly and shiny, you know? Make it pop. Edge highlight being the second one out of I think what'll probably end up being four, but could be three. I'm still going over every edge. I'm not focusing on where the highlights would be yet. That's what the, the next two brighter passes will be for. So for this section, like of the thigh, which with the pose won't be get getting too much light in general. It won't be getting as much whoops, it won't be getting as much of the brighter edge highlights. Yep, I gotta, gotta protect as much as I can, even though it's, uh, it always ends up getting damaged a little bit. You know, any project, even if you do top coat it, there's always some amount of handling. I do my best, though. There would be a lot more paint damage if I wasn't locking parts of the poses in place. I uh, see a nice fleck of paint that made it into the edge highlight there.
that edge is a little thick, I think. Yeah, this will be the last uh, stream for this week. By the way, it might be the last live stream for this project. I'm not sure yet. Kind of depends how much painting I get done over the weekend. If I power through all hardcore and just get close to finishing it, I might just, you know, finish it on Sunday. Or finish it by Sunday things take a bit longer than that might be able to squeeze out one more stream early next week but uh, I am a little behind on this project so I feel like I should be focusing on just finishing it offline this weekend either way I'm happy to I've been able to get in two streams this week and I'd say the experiment of trying a morning live stream has been a success. And you know four live streams for the aerial project overall ain't bad if this is the last one. You know, considering this is like a project for a video, it's not like the the Darbatos, which was mostly a live stream project, or the Sasabi. video is going to be a tricky one. You know me, I can edge highlight or whatever for hours. But when it comes to like writing the scripts for the video, like I'm, I'm usually pretty satisfied with a lot of the scripts I write, but I have, I have a hard time not procrastinating that kind of stuff. It's like way easier for me to procrastinate the script writing and video editing stuff than it is for me to procrastinate the painting stuff. <clears throat> oh, hello, Nick does stuff. It's not the last stream ever, box box, but uh you know, I may don't have that good old stream schedule, so I'm just gonna keep y'all waiting in anticipation for whenever the next one is gonna be. Who knows? Maybe it could it could be weeks, months, days. <laughs> uh, you're enveloped by Baldur's Gate 3, Nick. Yeah, Baldur's Gate 3 looks very good. I've uh, had to intentionally keep Steam off my computer for uh, the last while, just because. Because uh, I was playing too much Total War, like usual. And, uh, yeah, if I had Baldur's Gate 3, I would sink hours into that easily. How's it, how is it? It's, like, officially out of early access now, right? What kind of character are you playing?
Hmm, I think I might do the thing where I split this into two edges. Yeah, I think that just makes it look a little fancier. Creating some edges with the brush strokes that aren't even there. Sort of. It's like, uh, I guess it's like a curve, not an edge. But if I paint some straight-ish lines on there, it'll look edgier. The knee pad's done. You made a half orc monk. Oh no, you've been wiped twice. Do you get a respawn or do you have to start a new character when you wipe? Does that have a hardcore mode? I would probably, if I was playing Baldur's Gate 3, I would. Hmm, I would probably make a Dragonborn character. It's been a while since I played one of those and like. Actual tabletop D&D. &D. I mean, with actual tabletop D&D, &D, what, mostly what I've done for the last few years is be the dungeon master, but... I did have session two of a campaign this week that I was uh, playing an actual player character in. And I'm playing a Goliath. Uh, a Goliath sorcerer, but... Upon hitting level two, I have taken a level one fighter, because the plan is to... Uh, or my character is like a Goliath archaeologist who is very interested in runes. So I'm gonna go to uh, at least level 3 in fighter so I can take the rune knight uh, specialization. Because that just, just seems like a cool flavorful thing to do. And, uh, my, and then I'm also a storm sorcerer. And yeah, well, when I hit level 3 in fighter... We'll see. We'll see how that goes, and then the level after that, I'll have to decide whether to keep going down the sorcerer path or the fighter path. I guess it depends on what the uh, what the class perks for uh, rune knight fighter are at the higher levels. So I have to decide whether I want those. Or the higher level sorcerer stuff. Something tells me the higher level magic stuff from the sorcerer class will probably be more powerful. Oh good, you can just reload. Hello, the Mighty Joe. Welcome. Thanks for coming. Half-Orc Monk Barbarian. That's, uh, that sounds fun. I'm, I'm glad you can multi-class in Baldur's Gate. Multi-classing is fun. <laughs> I mean, and I can't speak for Baldur's Gate. In 5th edition D&D, like, multi-classing is still a little complicated, but it's not as bad as it was in, like, older editions. Uh, no, Grays, I don't have a live stream schedule. Usually I post... 8-ish hours beforehand when I'm gonna stream, but today's stream was an exception. It's just like a cat one like last casual Friday morning stream for the week so uh, you know, I was just being a bit lazy I guess or when I went to bed last night I wasn't like fully ready to commit to streaming in the morning but you know then I I motivated myself to get some streaming done after having the first round of coffee 
I will say that after I've got like there's there's like two videos in the backlog I'm working on right now. One is this Gundam Aerial one. The other one is with some conquest miniatures. And once those are done, I I've got a I've got to reevaluate how things are going on the channel. Probably take some time to job search as well, so I can afford groceries and rent. And who knows, maybe I'll lean more heavily into the stream and, and actually make a stream schedule. This is just wild speculation I'm talking about right now, though, so no promises. So you'll you'll just have to wait and give it give it a month or two. I appreciate the interest in the streams, though. Uh, the Mighty Joe, yes I did. I watched the end of The Witch from Mercury the week it came out. Loved the show overall, I thought the ending was too rushed. Like it could have been, they could have done another 12 or 24 episodes easily. I'm assuming Bandai didn't think it was going to be that popular. Uh, I love the Gundam Calabarn. I think I saw you post that you got it on Instagram. Uh, yeah, I wish I had the Gundam Calabar. I kind of wish I was painting it instead of the aerial, but you know, I do like the aerial a lot still. Those more just like, I was like getting started with the aerial project and then I saw the Gundam Calabar show up in the Witch for Mercury. I was like, damn, it looks pretty cool. Especially when the permit sections turned rainbow, looks awesome. And the whole, uh, Sulemio thing that happened recently where Bandai, like, decanonized the, like, marriage and said it was open to interpretation. I don't know if you saw or heard about any of that, but uh, I hated that. That was felt like a big slap in the face. And, yeah, it was super unnecessary. Yeah, I liked The Witch from Mercury a lot. I'm assuming Bandai probably wasn't expecting it to be as much of a hit as it was. And by the time they were like, uh, we should have made more episodes of this. All the animators are busy on other projects like the second Hathaway's Flash. That's my theory anyways. I suppose we should be grateful we even got 24 episodes. Lots of animes only make it to 12 these days. Yes, you also needed more. Yeah, Bandai. Yeah, I mean, it was really obvious what Bandai was doing with that. That's well, pretty hypocritical. Yeah. Nick, uh, Baldur's Gate 3 does seem like one of the best translations of the tabletop game into a video game you could get at this point. Yeah, no, the, fin the finale for Witch for Mercury could have easily been an entire movie. So yeah, it makes me wonder what what Bandai slash Sunrise, or I, I can't remember what the names of the studios are now. I think they switched it up recently, but interested to see what they got planned for 2024. Well, I guess there's that, well, it's not being animated by Bandai slash Sunrise, but there's that like CGI Gundam show set during the one year war that's like being done in Unreal Engine. I can't remember what that one's called announced recently and then of course there's that Netflix live-action Gundam movie that uh, that probably won't come out in 2024 if I'm guessing 
maybe we'll see a preview for it in 2024 at some point or like actual production stills perhaps the second Hathaway's Flash movie will come out in 2024 I guess there's gonna they've got gonna have another kind of casual short form series come out for the build metaverse or whatever whatever that business is it's not not too exciting to be honest All right, the black edge highlighting there is done. Thank you, Ghetto Jet Racing. Also, hello. All right, well, I have gray on the palette, so I'm gonna keep using that and start working on the torso here. I'm using this box lid to just cover pieces cover up pieces to protect them from dust, by the way, in case anyone was wondering. Oh yeah, you can see some wicked paint chipping that happened there. I'm assuming that came from putting the head down on here. So it probably gets uh, covered up when the head's on there. I'll have to check that before I determine whether to clean it up or not. Good times, hand painting with acrylics. Thank you, Grace. Glad I can provide a relaxing morning stream. My tummy's hurting a bit though. I haven't eaten enough for breakfast. I might have to take a quick break to just eat a couple uh, cherries in a minute my hands not too shaky yet we're almost at an hour the main goal I have for this morning stream is like I need to at least do it for an hour because it's like I'm just taking a very casual approach to the stream today a lot of the times I'll go for or my average stream duration is probably like two hours 40 minutes but, uh, you know, these morning streams are a new experiment for me. So I'm not putting my, I'm not holding myself to my usual time. I like how I put the alligator clip on the neck here, but then I wasn't even holding it. Sorry, I'm not in focus. Oh, uh, thank you for the super chat, the Mighty Joe Studio. It's a uh, hundred pesos. Yes, we do need more Thunderbolt. I've watched Thunderbolt. Well, I've watched the first four episodes of Thunderbolt probably I think four times and then I've watched like all eight episodes of Thunderbolt twice I believe and yeah the the blue balls are real. <laughs> it just yeah the cliffhanger is brutal. I haven't read the manga I suppose I could. I can't remember if the Thunderbolt manga is finished or not. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather get more Gundam Thunderbolt in uh, 2024 than the next Hathaway's Flash movie. But yeah, who knows? That, that one has been in pur like anime purgatory f for years. Who knows? Who knows when we're getting that? We gotta get it eventually, though.
Thanks again for the super chat. If anyone, if anyone watching hasn't uh, been following the Mighty Joe's studio, highly recommend. Very skilled builder. Did a nice full mechanic. Was it full mechanics aerial recently that I saw on your Instagram? Time no see. Oh, you were doing the full mechanics, nice. Yeah, well, Hathaway's Flash, and that's based off uh, novels, isn't it? I don't even know if those have been translated to English. Well, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there was also a manga. And yeah, the the, the ending of uh, Hathaway's Flash, the first movie, also gave me blue balls. And then afterwards, I found out that it's like, oh, it's planned to be a trilogy. That makes sense. Where this piece is located on the waist, uh, it's not catching too much light because, you know, it's kind of in a recessed area. So I'm wondering if I'm going a bit too ham on the edge highlights, but I don't know. What can I say when I see the edges? I can't help myself. bathroom break after this part of the waist is done <clears throat> then I'll also just eat a couple fruits real quick so I can oh, I, did I highlight the wrong edge there no not quite all right yeah I did it's hard to tell
My edges are getting all confused up in here. Maybe we'll just tie, figure out that section out and tidy it up later off stream. Okay. Long time, much sleep, yes. Okay, it was novels. You want a real grade X Xi Gundam? I can't, I always forget how to pronounce that one. A real grade one. The high grade is already so intense though. Uh, oh, what was your first master grade? Box Fox. Okay, I'm gonna just go use the washroom quickly and then eat like two cherries. So I have enough energy to stream for like you know, another half an hour or so. Okay, be right back, everybody. Okay, I'm back. <sighs> Refilled my water. Ate a couple cherries. Give me enough fuel to do like, I don't know, probably at least 20 more minutes. If I do 20 more minutes of streaming, then I'm, the stream will be an hour and a half, and that's probably like 
the minimum amount I want to reach. So, uh, my apologies for the stream being a little shorter than usual. This one was a bit more casual and last minute. I wasn't, uh, I don't know if you weren't here earlier when I was explaining I wasn't, uh, fully committed to streaming when I went to bed last night, but then, you know, I woke up this morning, I'm like, yeah, okay, I can do a bit of streaming. Just get one more in this week. Not, uh, not as well put together this week. Appreciate y'all coming to watch, though. Morning streams have had a better turnout than I thought they would, which is encouraging. Uh, yeah, we got a fleck of paint there, or some a particle that has been pulled up, perhaps. See if I can flatten that, kind of. Yeah. That's probably from this part rubbing against something here. If I take a guess. You see this brush? The tip is curling pretty bad, but uh... You can still do lots of edge highlighting with it, you just need to utilize the, the hooked tip properly. But then the, the rounds of edge highlight that come after this one, I'll have to break out the nicer brush with the, the pointier tip. Always save the nicest brushes for the, the final steps that matter more. Or not that they matter more, that they just require more control. Oh, I guess I could do another little... A chalet like... That. Hello, goblin. <laughs> Don't tell me what to do, Robert. I mean, if you're working right now and watching this stream, I don't see what the problem is. <laughs> Got a little chunk of something on the end of the brush there. edgy if I do say. I know some of these parts on the underside of the chest, like on the side here, are supposed to have the permit, or they're like part of the permit score section, but I decide to just leave it as the top part only. Just cause that's, that's just how I wanted it to look. <clears throat> you painted your Kshatriya sleeves, nice. Uh, Joe, I airbrushed, I primed it with the airbrush. Good old Vallejo surface primer black. And then I did the initial like gold metallic on the underframe. And that was it for airbrushing. And then I'll use the airbrush again to top coat it.
the usual fare for me. Just a little bit of airbrushing at the beginning and then almost everything else is hand painting. Because I don't like airbrushing as much. Yeah, the, the gold and the... Well, the gold, there was some hand painting. Like, the initial layer was done on the airbrush, but I was super, like, lazy with the thinning ratio, and it didn't go on too well. But that was fine, because I did some uh, dry brushing and washing after. which was documented on camera, so you should be able to see part of that in the video when it's out. Yeah, the only way I could get away with the really lazy airbrushing I did, you know, lazy in terms of like mixing the proper ratios and like getting the PSI right. I was pretty sloppy with those steps because I knew I was going to be dry brushing the metallics afterwards. I wonder how many people are playing Baldur's Gate 3 today. There's probably a bunch of Baldur's Gate 3 videos coming releasing on YouTube today. Like probably it's a bunch of people have been working on like reviews for months. Finally get a release them today. Uh, too tall Barbatos. That would be too tall. That would be... Take up, like, an entire sh shelf on a Ditolf. I don't even know if it would fit. I hope you can get that priming done, Goblin. Best of luck. Now, this section, I'm not even sure if I should highlight it. But I'm gonna do just a tiny bit that might be showing, but it definitely won't get uh, any of the highlights past this because it will be in the shadow of the backpack. 
but I will give it just a little bit along the bottom and corners. Uh, yes, Armored Core 6. That's another exciting release this year. Uh, what mech game is that, Box Box? Almost done the black. You're gonna heavy arms your armored core. So do I give it a Gatling gun and a bunch of missile launchers? Maybe some hidden Gatling guns behind the, the nips? Yeah, the Gundam Evolution closing down was pretty depressing. <laughs> you know, I hadn't played it in a while. I was like, I felt really bad for all the people that put in all the time and energy, you know, whether it was like to get good at it or grind to unlock all the suits they wanted or make content about it. And then just kind of went in the garbage. Bit of a tragedy. But, you know, Gundam Evolution isn't the only game that's happened to. Kind of just really illustrates the flaws of the whole free-to-play live service model. I hate it, personally. The game model, not the game Gundam Evolution. I did have fun playing Gundam Evolution. I'm glad I didn't spend any real money on it, though. Yeah, the, the way Bandai's been doing Gundam video games lately has just been, like, weird and... Yeah, it's just been weird. If I had Steam on my computer, I would have tried Battle Operation 2 by this point. I hear it's a little buggy, though. Oh, no, I haven't paid too much attention to it. Because, you know, don't have steam on my computer. Quad Gatlings, that'll be fun. What are you referring to, Goblin? 
not everything needs it. Yeah, I'm gonna hold off on highlighting this next section because I need off camera I need to put the head back on and see how much of it is actually exposed. Oh, the free to play live service model. Yeah, yeah, I feel ya. Yeah, there's so many good PS2 Gundam games that are just really hard to acquire like that. It's annoying. Gundam stuff that aside from the model kits get Gundam stuff getting into the Western market always seems to have been in this like just weird janky spot. They're still working on Xenoblade X, ain't nothing wrong with that. Uh, let's see what's what are we at for time? Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of turquoise on the palette and just do a bit more edge highlighting on this, and then I'm gonna wrap up the stream because my tummy's hurting just a little bit, which means I should eat real breakfast. But hey, for this casual last minute spontaneous morning live stream, I think it's gone pretty well. And like I said before, I appreciate everyone coming out. Especially with the short notice I gave this time. I had some urinate tomatoes. The way they animated them, they looked quite delicious. Maybe I'll just like sneak over to the fridge and just eat ham straight out of the package like Suleta did in that one scene. When Suleta was in her depression arc.
Yeah, it is a very relatable Suleta moment. I get that reference, Goblin. I've got the Witch for Mercury OP stuck in my head. The OP from the first 12 episodes, I should say. I've got that one saved to my Spotify. I haven't dug up the other one yet. I can't remember what it's called. Did anyone cry at, all, at any point during a Witch for Mercury? I almost did at a couple points in the second season, which is pretty big deal for me because I've like basically never actually cried from watching anything. <laughs> it takes a lot to make me cry, I guess. The Last of Us Episode 3 made me have to dab my eye with a tissue, which is a, a big deal. Slash by Yama, thank you. That's a good question, Goblin. And Goblin, that's a yes very much to the crying question, I take it. All the music is good. Yeah, that, uh, Joe, that scene where Suleta's, like, dumped into space, that's probably, like, one of the, the, that's a contender for, like, most emotional damaging moment in Witch for Mercury. Either that or, like, the episode before where, where she has that, that duel with, the du the, the ghoul duel. Oh yeah, the Elfrith with like the big hand. That's a cool one. Probably won't buy it because it's P Bandai, but it looks pretty cool.
Sorry, I don't know how long I was out of focus there. My bad. Yeah, that Dairy Bald was pretty good. Sorry, Box Box. They're only minor spoilers. And it's uh, they're decently old spoilers now. I feel confident in saying what I slightly spoiled there will not ruin your enjoyment of the show. It's not like I spoiled the big twist or anything. But, you know, I will admit some slight carelessness there. But what can I say? We got talking about G-Witch and I get excited and I want to talk about it. So, spoiler alert, emotional damage. Have those tissues ready. Okay, good. What other G-Witch kits do I have in the backlog? I don't think I have... Yeah, I don't have any other... I don't have any G-Witch stuff in my backlog right now. My backlog, I still have a lot of Iron-Blooded Orphan stuff, and then... A bunch of other, you know, <laughs> random stuff. The most, like, recent... Or the, the, the kits that I've released recently that are in my backlog. Oh, there's a bunch of minis, but... The last... The latest Bandai backlog thing I acquired was the blue eyes white dragon kit and that's one where I don't think I'll paint it I'll probably just build it for fun possibly on stream who knows I don't have any like actual plans for that because there's a bunch of other stuff ahead of it in the priority list but you know it's the blue eyes white dragon I had to get one if only there was a red eyes black dragon kit am I right I'm definitely going to get the uh, the Metal Greymon kit when that comes out, too. Nice, good use of your 20 minute break there. No eyes green dragon. <laughs> I only watched a bit of the Yu-Gi-Oh! show when I was a kid, but like in elementary school, the trading card game was really popular. So I got into it, just kind of out of peer pressure, I guess. But you know, I also 
eventually, like, you know, collecting Yu-Gi-Oh cards was fun. You know, frustrating at times, just like Pokemon cards. I, now that I'm thinking about it, like, my school or my, my elementary school experience, there's definitely, like, it went in waves. There was, like, you know, the, the year of Pokemon cards, the year of Digimon, or no, there wasn't a year of Digimon cards. That never quite took off. There's a year of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. A year of Beyblades, of course, as well. Gotta love them Beyblades. And there's one year or season or whatever where everyone got really into playing with marbles, too. And the things would go in waves and switch because we would all just get in trouble with the teachers for getting into fights over, like, fights and arguments over the trading Yu-Gi-Oh cards or the rules of the game or whatever. Because, you know, when you're playing it as a kid, you don't actually know the rules. You just make up shit. So then, like, the these various mer uh, products marketed to children would cause all these problems on the playground and then they'd have to get banned by the school administration so then we would just move on to the next thing like Beyblades until that gets banned and you know that's the circle of the circle of life oops I made a tiny mistake there <clears throat> yeah the principal yeah there you go yeah Metal Greymon looks amazing I was the kid with the Charizard too. I got a hollow Charizard, I brought it to school and then someone stole it. <laughs> oh, the principal took your Charizard away, damn. Did you do it for your own safety? <laughs> Emperor Greymon. That'd be a deep cut if they released that as a kit. Okay, I'm gonna paint this last panel on the side here, and then I'm gonna start wrapping up the stream. I've made it to hour 45 minutes, so I think that's good enough for this for this casual Friday morning stream. So if you have any last minute things, questions, super chat you wanna throw in into the chat, now's your chance. At this point, I can't say for sure whether there'll be any more live streams for the aerial. Depends on how the painting goes this weekend. I might just power through and try and get it done quick so we can move on to the video editing part. Dude probably sold it for a couple of bucks. Well, damn. The Hollow Charizard, I think now, if you have like a mint condition one, you could probably get like 300 US dollars for it. I'm not entirely sure. I think I did put freehand in the title of this stream, and I didn't actually paint any freehand, so let me just, for those of you who haven't seen, I'll show what the freehand looks like on these two, these two bits right here. The freehand is going to get some, like, more highlighting work after this. This is just what it looks like blocked in. And yeah, lots of fancy squiggly lines, like with the Delanza kit bash, or Delanza Gushin kit bash I did. There aren't, I mean, those, like, these bigger spots here, and, like, maybe on the waist, there'll be room for freehand, but not much on the actual chest. Like, I, I guess I could do, like, a tiny bit in a few places. It'll get pretty tiny, though. Sorry, Robert, I don't know enough about the Gundam Seed setting to answer that question. Or I don't know enough about the how the technology works in Gundam Seed to answer that question. Uh, so yeah, what other... Any other last minute housekeeping items? 
Uh, so yeah, there might be like one, if there are going to be any more streams for the aerial project, it'll probably just be one more stream next week. Thank you, Joe. And thanks again for that super chat. Uh, yeah, and uh, follow me on the social media or hit that good old bell icon to find out when the next streams are going to be. And if this was the last stream, then uh, look forward to the, v the full video for Gundam Aerial. <laughs> yeah, good question, Joe. Will the battery last? Okay, well, with that, I will say good morning, good evening to whoever's watching. Hope you have a solid weekend and uh, the rest of your Friday, whether you're working or have the day off. And I'll talk to everyone later.